Greetings YouTube, this is BJ Black, and this is part 12 of my Let's Play of Momus Quest Paradox RPG Catalyst Chapter. We've got a lot to get to in this video, so I'm going to jump right into it. This is San Ilia. Sonia's always wanted to visit it. It's the center of the Ilias faith. Luca just now remembers that Ilias is priestess. Vanilla bemoans that this is a, having a terrible effect on her evil heart. Yeah, Gobble realizes she's going to get beat up if she talks the way she does. So, let's gather information. All of these topics, so... We can ask around town, but we're actually not going to. We can visit the Pope here. The King of Sunny Land, also the Pope. Apparently, it's two different titles, however. Sonia says we're going to ask around town and then go to the Pope, but I know what we're going to find in town, and that's a whole lot of nothing. We do have a Kitsune Senpai lesson time to listen to, though. Kamaro would like to know why is San Elia's temple so large? Well, that's because, uh, you know, the god is also really large. As expected of Kitsuna Senpai, she really knows everything. Yeah, we didn't find anything in the town, so let's head inside. We'd like to speak to the boat, but there's probably a waiting list a mile long. We put our name on the list. Eliasville, Luca, baptized in such and such. It's 1455, that's an important date to remember. Interestingly, we're on the list. In fact, we've got special formation to come in right away. How nice. Elias did show up at Luca's baptism, so it's only natural that word got up to the higher-ups. We get the VIP status. So this is the Pope. Introductions, lots of formal language. Return speaking, lots of formal language. Interesting, so interestingly, Sonia is in her hat again. Yep, all of a sudden, formal dress. First we ask about the white rabbit, but unfortunately he hasn't heard anything about any such monster. In that case, Luca's father, Mar Marcellus. He was a hero a couple decades ago, so there should be some records. And yes, there are. But there are more recent records in recent years. He talks a bit about an assassination attempt on his life that he had uh, had to endure. Doesn't say exactly what this has to do with Luca's dad. Although it does say that Razaro was suspected. Sonia believes Razaro didn't do it. And the Pope uh, does admit that it's hard for Sonia to believe it, seeing as Rosaro, Rosaro raised her. But with our regard to that, Luca's father has been out on on a journey in these last few years. Where exactly is not entirely known.
but there there have been some sightings. He's been confirmed sighted at two Tartaros. The one in the east of Elias continent and the one in the north of Sabasa on this country, continent of Centra. There was one further sighting, however, here in the library of San Ilia Castle. Which is really an odd place to be put next to the other two. It was about one year ago, and he left one book behind. The Faith of the Seven Spirits and Its Origins. An old book, pretty much nowhere you can find it. <clears throat> Elias has nothing good to say about such a, such a faith, of course. So, the book is still in the library, and since we're really related to the donor, we could just take it. However, the library has been infested with monsters. Monsters. In the basement library of a church. A giant church. Of course, Elias is troubled, but we're going to go get it. Huga! Well, Sonny, well, the Pope will be praying for our good luck in finding information. <clears throat> well, Sonia does stop us. The Pope apparently had some kind of business with us to be put on a, his special list and all. Many calls him his Popeness. So what's up your Popeness? But he's going to be nice and patiently wait for us to do our thing before telling us what he wants. We can come talk to him after we get the book. So this is the way to the library, and this is the way to the dungeon part of the library. Mm. Okay, we're still good. This painting is something that exists. You can come visit it much later for a scene. In this area of the library, there are only two monster types, so it gets kind of repetitive. They should have added a third monster for this game page 4097 would be good. But here is our destination already. This is a monster and the good news is we don't have to explain what we're here for. She already knows. We're here for the book. Of course we've been found out. But yeah, why? She was sent here to guard the book by the Mao, actually. Somehow we already know that this is not Alice the 16th we're talking about, but Alice the 15th, acting Mao. We don't really know what, <coughs> why she did it. And page six, uh, 65,537 will specifically say that she doesn't know why. But, you know, it's my oh, you gotta do what she says. She says we can leave if we want to. After all, we weren't. He, she wasn't ordered to kill us, she was just ordered to protect the book. But Elias isn't gonna back down, and neither is Luca. So we're on for it. Mini recognizes this as a book-themed monster, although it's still mostly tentacles. And Mini offers to just burn the hell out of it.
our monster reacts with fear, so we figure out that her weakness is fire. We'll just say that she's giving us a handicap. If I were fighting more seriously, I would be using fire attacks. <clears throat> but as usual, on very easy, these battles are a face roll. We get some goodies. And she passes out. Drops the book. Just so we have another Elias moment today. <clears throat> now that we've realized she's lost consciousness, Elias gets to debate whether she should kill her, kill her while she's down or just humiliate her somehow. We're, however, going to ignore Elias entirely and see what we can find in the book. And on the very first page, handwritten note from Luca's father. Luca needs to join contracts with the four spirits in order to get history running in the proper path. In this way, the flow of time will the disturbances in the flow of time will be quelled somewhat. Well, we don't understand any of this, but we start talking about it. Elias knows that on this continent there are four spirits wielding the power of nature with whom you can contract. You with whom you can contract. If it's got something to do with the flow of time then, and this disturbance is there, for, there too, then it must be connected with everything else. Elias is opposed to this course of action. The spirits are monsters and she hates monsters, so she doesn't want any contracts joined with them or whatever. But it's a good thing Elias isn't the hero, Luca is. And he's down with it. And in any case, they do need more power to fight the p more powerful enemies. Pucci observes that we're going to be fighting with the Maol's forces sooner or later. Especially since we've stolen a book from someone who was entrusted to keep it by the Maol herself. Uga! Let's get excited about fighting stronger enemies. The closest spirit will be we can find will be Sylph in the Forest of Spirits. In the book there is another thing. This is the Summoner's Guide. With this we can be we can convert our class to the summoner job at the job check. It seems you need to finish Maholt's, Master Maholt's guy. Uh, magic user, yeah. You need to f master the magic user class before you can switch to summoner. And here we have yet another objective. The White Rabbit, Lucas' father, the Tartaros. These four spirits and also the three mouths. Mm. Although that's part of our official... Although... Okay, the Forest of Sewers is next on our official list right now. The enemies there are pretty strong, so we should consider other possibilities. And now that we have to talk about it, the Pope had a request of us that we didn't listen to because we had our own stuff. We may as well just go talk to him. Alright, let's help, help out his Popeness.
That chest there is a mimic, in case you want to fight it. And there is another thing to pick up here. No, not here. Yes, here. There's a small medal in this chest. For having only two rooms, this place is actually a hard to map out. All right, Pope, let's hear. And now that we've managed to do that in short order, it seems like we are reliable enough to be trusted with this next one. Minnie says if he hasn't got a place to stay, he can hang out with us. The head knight, however, doesn't want us to go on this mission just yet. He's concerned that we're not prepared yet. He would prefer a force of about 10 people. Of course, we can only carry 8, so that must be a problem, right? And the Pope just goes along with it. The knight leader would like to suggest that we get some mithril equipment before we do it. So he's going to step aside and let us do that. Well, your popeness seems like pretty dangerous. Is somebody out to get you? Hmm. Well, in any case, whether we go on this mission immediately or do the mithril thing is up to us. If we want to do the mission immediately, we can talk to him again and accept that mission. By talking to this guy, however, we can start his mission. In order to get the mithril, we get to travel to the Holy Mountain Amos and grab some mithril from there. He'll take care of the permissions. If you don't talk to him here at this point, you can't actually collect the mithril. So we can get the mithril and then get mithril items from the blacksmith in this place. Nice and simple. Oh, Elias has something to say. Head Knight, would you turn around? We have <laughs> she would like to speak with Luca. And he does. Anyway, Elias would like to head up the mountain in order to speak with... It can commune with the heavens. The Holy Mountain almost is close to the heavenly world, so she should be able to get her message through if she's there. She still doesn't believe that the heavenly world has disappeared. At the summit of Mount Amos, she should be able to contact them. And that's that. We don't really care about the head knight, so we can just leave him staring at the wall for as long as he likes. Harpy feather is useful if you don't want to walk through two screens. So here we can mine Mine isn't exactly the proper word, but we can find Mithril here, and then go to the summit. Elias senses a high-level angel. The power of a high-level angel nearby. Alright, after grabbing the Mithril, we can handle that. There are two enemies here. A Sister Succubus and a Sister Lamia, which you could get recruit for... In order to get a proof of faith, here's our mithril.
A little later in the video I'll tell you what a proof of a faith can get you. But we've got a lot of stuff to talk about here. <coughs> Some great magic powers interfering with the weather here. Almost certainly it's a Seraphim class. And here we have an angel. She's very heavily wounded. <clears throat> Luca has a vision. And realize this is Michaela son. Michaela. <clears throat> Elias is shocked. Michaela is surprised at the least to see Luca with her last breaths. There's no way the Mikada could be beaten like this, however. Mikaela tells her that they are still here. It's above us. This is an angel, we immediately see, somehow. She does have wings, and if we were closer we could see her halo, yes. Or maybe those horns are the halo. She is the Seraphim Gnosis. It is her mission to visit punishment, heaven's judgment, upon the guilty. She is the one who did this to Michaela. Uh, halfway, according to her. The other half is what the is her life upon the world below. By residing in for a long time in the mortal world, an angel's power is corrupted by the impurities, the lack of holiness here. If Michaela had been at her original power, Gnosis could not have won. No chance, really. Elia says that even no matter how long Michaela would have lived here, she wouldn't have weakened that much. There aren't a lot of t angels who could do it, even at do this to her even in this state. Elias once again says that she doesn't know about this angel. <clears throat> she accuses this angel of coming from a parallel universe. And Gnosis for once, the first time in our entire adventure, recognizes Elias and asks Elias to forgive her for not being able to assist her for a while. When the time comes, she will, however. Until then, toodles. And the weather clears up so we know the, what was causing that. So now we get to see Mikaela. She's glad to see me. She's glad that the get, uh, that Gnosis is gone. We didn't have a chance against her at our in our state. Luca asks Sonia for some restoration, but she's been doing restoration magic as best she can, and it hasn't been had any effect. Minnie says that she can use her old tail if she wants to. Just don't die. Minnie surprisingly has pretty good character development. But it's useless. The life force is basically gone from her body at this point.
Her one regret is that she wasn't able to do anything for Luca. But at the least, with the last of her power, she'll give Luca this. She powers up Luca and we get the baptism signal. You recall at Luca's baptism he wasn't able to receive a blessing from the goddess. With this he receives it and he changes to the hero job class. He can feel the power in his body and all. Elias says that with Mikaela's last power, she transformed him into a hero. With Mikaela's last breath, she asked Luca to do something for the world. She's unable to spit out the last verb, but it's probably safe. With this, she dissolves into light and disappears. Feeling powerful, powerless and regret and regretful. Luca, at this point, Feels strong resolve in his heart for her, his aunt, whom he never got to meet until now. This is where he truly receives his hero's determination. When he was younger, he wanted to be a hero, just a childlike dream kind of thing for it. He didn't expect anyone to have to die in order to make him a hero. And certainly he wouldn't have wanted that. So, rest in peace, Mikaela. Luca's gonna be a hero you can be proud of. So everybody's going to be supportive about it. But still, why would Gnosis want to kill Mikaela? Oh, furthermore, how did Luca know it was Mikaela when they'd never met before? Well, yeah, he spits out that he saw a, instantly saw a vision coming to him. Probably this was another memory coming to us through another world. In any case, let's go. While we're here, I may as well show you this. This is a blue chest. You can't open it normally, but I've got... Elias up to level high enough where she has the bandit unlock skill. Well, the first of them. So if we equip that, we can open these blue chests. That is a strange item. Oh yes, the sister monsters you can recruit here. You will have to run their affection up in the castle probably to a hundred points before you get that symbol of faith I spoke of. I'd recruit them, but I have a, 
quite a bit more to go through. And it could take a long time. Now we can accept this mission, or we could have accepted earlier. So now we'll get into the details. There is an ancient temple ruins that, in, that he needs to go perform a ritual in the innermost portion of. However, there are monsters in it, which is why he needs protection, yes. All of the soldiery of San Ilia is busy at the moment. But it was decided that Luca, the hero, would be sufficient. So yes, we're escorting him to the lowest level of an ancient temple. So we protect his pope, his popeness. We'll do our best. So when is this ritual? The Pope's going to prepare himself here and we're going to head there and meet him. This ancient temple ruins is at the Luddite town. We can speak to the priest there in order to get access to the ruins. This is a secret mission, so we don't get to talk to anybody about it. Right, secrets. Not like we actually talk to anybody about anything. And now we finally get to come to Luddite. Luddite. This is a village filled with a bunch of weird people. It is basically a Christian communism. In here there's an interesting thing. It talks about how nice the village is. It's fun, everybody's friendly, and it's like being in heaven. That's going to change later. The writing, I mean. It'll basically be the same place. Well, except for events. And here is the priest we need to talk to. He's heard everything he needs to know, so he's going to meet us at the entrance to the cave where they found the ruins. We couldn't get in there without him. However, he can't actually be seen in public with us, so we're going to go there on our own. You see, the Luddite faction here is a faction of the Ilias faith that rejects the use of Machina. That's the stuff they dug up from the Tartarus. And since the Pope is not part of the Luddite faction, the Luddites reject him. Ah, uh, the Pope is here already inside. There aren't any monsters in this portion of the cave. Alright, further in here is the ancient temple ruins. With the orthodox sect, sect and the opposed to Machina sect here in the Luddite village. Since the Pope isn't part of this sect, he's rejected and we are rejected as well. In fact, the Luddites reject pretty much everybody who doesn't specifically declare the faith. The ancient temple was found in this cave.
Now it's now it's filled that this ancient temple ruins is just what this place is called. In other words, it's not really a temple. And we walk a little further. And he'll continue the conversation. The ruins that they did found are not actually a temple. And the L and because it was called a temple publicly, the Luddites set up their faithful little community here as a kind of way to restore their restore the faith of the true. If they knew what the ruins actually were, they would never set their village up here, however. So what exactly is it? We'll find out in a minute. And here's his propeness! And now that we're here, the priest from the village will return. And instead we get to deal with this guy hanging out with us. As we already know, he can't fight. And we get to escort him to the lowest level. Sony offers to bludgeon anybody, anything that we f come across. And the Pope says, if those words are true, Rosaro, who raised her, really ought to be beat up really ought to be beat down. That's a funny joke for a pope, isn't it? Just a joke. Once again, the pope uh, accuses Rosaro of being involved in hi the assassination attempt on him. It was quite an explosion. At this point, the Pope says he's not a holy man. It's another joke, but Sonia takes it. Yeah, she's pretty much getting joked around. So, ancient temple. Yes, that's exactly what this is. Well, no, it's not a temple at all. So what is all this stuff? Nothing of this sort has existed up to this time period. Well, highly advanced technology and all that. They've got retrieved a lot of engineering stuff and machina out of here. So what do we understand? They really don't know what the place is or who made it. There are no records in here on that matter. There are lots of manuals and such. How to use the stuff. Maintenance and operation. But there isn't anything about who made it or where they came from or where they went. So let's continue on. Mm, this is the way. Only the upper echelons of the church know about this place. Well, the truth about this place. Only the people who can really be trusted. So why did they spread this to us? 
Well, that wasn't an accident. Most importantly, it's because we have been coming and going in the Tartarus. So how does he know about that? Even the stuff inside? Your popeness, did you come from that other world? Other world what? So yeah, he doesn't know what exactly happens in the bottom of the Tartarus. He just knows that we've been doing our heroist hero journey in and out of them. And I guess that's good enough for him. So let's continue. Big staircase. That means we must be getting close. And yes, this is the final floor. <clears throat> so what are we going to do down here? Is it really going to be a, a prayer and a ritual? Yeah. Well, the whole secret ritual thing is also a cover-up. It's something more important to the Pope than that. He spoke about Raza the thing about Rosaro before. It's related to that assassination attempt. Another bit of propaganda that was spread about about that explosion was that he got away with only small wounds. In actuality, he was mortally wounded. Even with the best medicine they had, it was desperate. So he was carried down here. And that was how he was able to survive. However, it's had unfortunate effects in that he has to come down here once a year for for he calls it maintenance or perhaps I, it would be better described as treatment At this point, San Ilya, or the Pope, would like to explain a bit about why he's angry at Razaro, even if he has, if there isn't strictly proof. His complaint is that he used a bad form of assassination. This was an assassination, an explosion of, at his, an explosion of a carriage he was riding in. It was a really big explosion and it could have hurt a lot of people. And if his schedule had been wrong, the time bomb would not uh, would not only have not hurt him but also hurt other people potentially other people as well. He suggests instead of the large explosion of his carriage, they should have put a small explosion in his seat and set it to go off on sensor. Really, do we need to be speculating about ways to kill yourself? Yeah, anyway, let's keep going. And now I can't run, so the cutscene has started. And this is the deepest part. Oh, there was a notice this a few steps before this where you could heal yourself. So, he says that more than half of the machines down here are still working, operational. Directly in front of us is a large capsule with some kind of liquid in it. Looking inside, A mysterious girl, or machine. 
They call her Sleeping Beauty. We have, they haven't been able to. I just noticed this. On those two wings back behind her head, there's a symbol of Mars and a symbol of Venus. Wonder what that's about. Anyway, the Pope says they haven't been able to activate her. But our business isn't with Sleeping Beauty, but with this other stuff over here. So let's begin maintenance. Now he really starts spitting out techno babble. He says we get to wait a little while. This is medical treatment, right? Well, this system has an advanced interface, so he can do it by himself, yes. He knows how to operate it, so that it starts a scan. And he lists off some percentages. <clears throat> so, mortal wounds and an explosion. Normally that wouldn't be possible to heal. Well, yeah, in that explosion, he lost more than half of his body. Wow, that's incredible. Well, Luca is so shocked that he steps back and touches something. He gets shocked. And... Maybe something else happened. The music changed. There's a noise from the capsule with the girl. And her eyes snap open. This is good news. I'm sure she wants to be our friend. Even though the research team was unable to do anything, Luca touched a panlin. It came on. <laughs> he would like to assert that he didn't do anything. In fact, he'll assert it twice. And the capsule opens up slowly, and the girl stands. The system has been reactivated. Current year is Johanne 1543. Current conditions unknown. Her designation, that would be her name, is Brunhilde. Circumstances unknown. She is supposed to wake up when the world is ending. So, she guesses that the world is ending and that's why she is woken up. She decides she's going to protect the world, however. We try and calm her down, but... She goes into battle mode. And says if we're going to destroy the world, she's going to stop us. Elias recognizes this effect as... Holy energy and darkness energy. Now to be able to use both of these at once, and this well, and at this uh, proficiency, this uh, once again is light and darkness fusion. Hardly think she should be surprised because we went through a whole dungeon filled with Apotosius. But yeah. And the Pope decides that he will also participate in the battle. You couldn't fight, right? Well, after maintenance, I guess he can. The hell is right. His popeness is his mecha popeness. So, in our party? Hell no. Alright, target set. Let's get going. Alright, take two of this battle. I lost to Brunhilde once here, so I'm actually going to be fighting a little seriously. 
which basically means taking a bit of time to heal my guys when they start dying. And aside from that, I'm basically just waiting her for her to for the very easy poison to take her out. Ah, oh, there we go. This is proof that I do need to do a bit of grinding to get my characters up to level. And now Brunhilde is sad because she lost, and that means that the world will be destroyed. But actually, we can clarify a bit that we're not going to destroy the world. In fact, the opposite. We're going to save the world. Yes, that means we're the same as you. That's what she was made for. So, we ask her... <laughs> Who exactly made her? Master did. So who is Master? Master is Master. She's not really smart. And now she's talking about without Master she doesn't know what to do. Asks Master to reply and calls out for him. Yeah, poor thing doesn't know what to do without the person who created her. Well, she really does get to be our friend because we'll right away ask her to come with us. She doesn't have permission from her master, but without master around, she does act of her own volition. So, she confirms and she's coming with us. Maybe I should put more advanced characters in my party. You know, so we don't lose to bosses all the time. Luca will be the temporary master for her for a while. Really surprising to see that happen. Sonia herself is surprised at the Pope's body. Well, yeah, he did lose half of it. This was the only way to extend his life. His popeness get, got to survive kinda like a phoenix. Well, our ritual down here is done, so we get to head back. And now the Pope has heard about the alternate universes, I guess. He has no knowledge that's useful on that point. So he is, is actually going to stay in our party. Something I swore about for a good long time when I first heard. I don't want any guys in my party after all. So we're kind of surprised that he's coming along, seeing as he's the Pope and everything. Yay, we get to hang out with the Pope-ness. But isn't he needed here, kind of being the King and all? The King and the Pope? Don't worry, we got a mechanism for it. It's another Mecha Pope. It's pretty lifelike. If you don't get within a meter or so, you shouldn't notice anything. Sonia's faith is being crushed. Well, Elias is being crushed a little too.
No. Oh. We do get to grab some stuff in another room in the castle we have access to now. Rewards are good. Part of the reason why we do things is to get rewards. Oh yes, now he tells us about another thing we can do. There are so many quests coming out of San Elia. This time, up to the north there is an uninhabited mansion where there have been zombies and ghost sightings. They sent someone to go investigate, but it was a failure and nobody returned. Yeah, let's go rescue them. We're all up in the heroism around here. How do we get there? Yeah, north. Okay, great. This guy is a guy. He'll join your party. No. And west from here is the place where we can grab the items. This guy's sprite head is behind the sprite of the tile above it, making it look like his hairdo is all screwed up by the way he walks. Ah, anyway, this guy's heard about our thing, and he talks about what they've gotten from Tartaros and what they've gotten from the ruins. He's gotten this from, managed to create this using their research. It's more stuff for the engineer class. Ah, Promistine would like to look at their research results. Uh, normal people wouldn't be able to understand it, but she gets it pretty quick. This is an atomic computer. She's surprised because she can only really understand the basics of this stuff. Yeah, she's got good eyes, though. She would like to go to those ruins herself and do some research. Uh, yeah, sure, if we got time. And this person will give us something? Yes. This is gunner. This is gun mechanism gun mechanism proof or something to that effect this is allow, allows us to become the gunner class at the job shack you do need to master the hunter class before you can become it so just a couple more things before we cl close out the video the first is we got that chunk of mithril, and here is where we can get mithril items. But more importantly, this is where Puppy can learn how to create mithril items herself. Well, he won't teach that to just anyone. You need to have faith, which is something Puppy's bad at. But don't cry. If you have the proof of faith, we can, he can teach you the mithril working. All you have to do is grab someone, grab a monster with a faithful characteristic and get them to give you one, give you a proof of faith. These are the sister enemies you can get at the holy mountain animals. You recruit them and then run their affection up high enough and they will give you a proof of faith. And here, in this house you can do an event. It will take Luca having three, no, 550 life approximately. And then you can get the book. Did I ever talk to her? No, I didn't. Alright. I forgot to do this, so let's go down and talk to her. How careless of me. You guys recall this boss, 5, 65,537 page. If you talk to her again after defeating her, she wakes up. 
And yes, she wasn't able to do what she was told. Elias speculates that she wasn't putting out her full power. Perhaps because she was doubting her mission? Well, yes. She had reservations about it. She doesn't know why Alice the 15th set her on this mission, and she wouldn't explain, so she was kind of sent out here blind. She doesn't know what the book was, as if she couldn't read it or something, but whatever. The 15th has also not explained why she took over for the 16th. And Elias, surprisingly, invites her to join our party. Elias is finally getting friendly with monsters. But she admits that this is just her using the monster for her own purposes. And also possibly to piss off Alice the 15th. But she's not going to join all by herself. She has a goal she would like first. She would like a certain item. This is the one I spoke of in town, behind the door. You can get that item. This is a book, one copy. Miss Shirley's Lover. Sonia immediately recognizes this as a Harlequin novel. And furthermore, no matter where you try and go, it's always sold out. Maybe Sonia is into Harlequin novels. In any case, if we get the book, we can recruit her into our party. Oh, this is health and mana restoration, if I didn't say that already. And I think we are well out of time, so... Next up we will be leaving San Ilia and heading for the mansion to the north. Hopefully next time we'll have time to do some side quests too. But for today, that is all and I will see you tomorrow. Catch you later.